Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. Welcome to the guide of how to get designer clothes for super cheap on the internet. There are so many designer clothes. Too many designer clothes, probably. There's just a just stupid quantity of things that are made. So yeah, we're just gonna kind of jump in on this. We're not really gonna do the theme song or anything today. We're just gonna kind of plow through the information here. The single most important piece of advice that I can give you is to not really be picky. Let me tell you exactly what I mean by that. I'm not saying don't be picky as in buy things that you don't actually like. I'm more saying don't get overly attached to items that are extremely recognizable. Hype items, basically. Hype items are not just something that apply to streetwear culture and sneakers. It's also just anything that is super duper recognizable. The most recognizable pieces by brands are always going to be the things that cost the most, even at resale. Sometimes with resale, that means you're gonna end up paying more for it. What did you say, Telfar bag? I went into a ton of detail about this point on the how to find your personal style on a budget video. That video is definitely worth watching. I'll link it down in the description. But to summarize the main points there, it's just that you shouldn't get overly attached to super specific items from a brand, it's much more useful to align yourself with the vision of a designer and then be open to anything that they've made. Because here's the deal, I don't wanna be mean, but if you're like, but I really want this extremely recognizable piece by this one brand, it is likely that you are at least subconsciously engaging in what is called conspicuous consumption, which just means that you are buying expensive things so that other people will think you are rich, which is so lame. <laughs> And not just because like that conceptually is lame all by itself, but also like, you know what rich people don't do? Try to prove that they're rich to other people. Anyway, all that to say, most of the advice that I'm gonna give here is gonna revolve around searching for things by a specific brand rather than a specific item by a specific brand. If your heart is really, truly, honestly set on a single item that is very well known by a specific designer, Good luck, it's going to be expensive. You may be asking yourself, Bliss, why would you just tell people how to find cool designer clothes? Doesn't that mean that there are fewer designer clothes out there for you to get? Well, first of all, I like you guys, I think you're cool. But also this shit is so much work. I feel completely comfortable telling you all how to do this because I feel fully confident that the vast majority of you will never do it. I should clarify up front that ultimately the way to get the best deals on anything that is specialized is to be part of a community that revolves around those things. Pretty much the only community that I'm in anymore is my private Discord group that's behind the Patreon. There's hundreds of people in there. It's extremely friendly. It's an incredible place to learn about fashion or to, you know, pick up a Rick coat that someone's getting rid of. The link is pretty straightforward and it is here on the screen right now, but if you wanted a clickable link, that is in the description. Supporting the channel starts at just $3 a month and you get a lot of other perks in addition to the private Discord server. Support the motherfucking Patreon! With that in mind, let's start with a little website called grail.com. Grail.com is a peer-to-peer e-commerce -peer e website that specializes in the resale of everything from high street to luxury menswear. Basically, most of this is gonna revolve around you setting up feeds for yourself and checking them regularly. For the maximum price thing, I would not try to adjust that to super duper lowball people. Like I think at one time you could lowball up to 60% off of what they were asking for, which is insane. No one is gonna sell you that stuff for that price. So maybe just like adjust it like 25 or 30% and just go from there. And that way you're not wasting a bunch of time sending out like messages asking people to cut the price in some huge way and then be like, no gargantuan waste of time. Then you're gonna select all of the brands that are gonna get included in your filter. This is where this gets really tricky. So you have to find some kind of balance of constantly having a wide variety of things to look at, but also not getting your feed cluttered up by stuff where people are just throwing a bunch of garbage in there. You can eliminate a little bit of that by setting a minimum price and having it be like at like, you know, $20 or $50 or whatever, because tons of people just like throw in like, $15 vintage t-shirt and it's like, it kind of looks like a Vivian Westwood t-shirt. So slice that out, set a minimum price. I'm very liberal with the amount of brands that I include in my feed. Some of the coolest stuff that I've ever gotten ended up being by brands that are not like undercover. You know, like I personally do not include Amiri in my searches. I don't personally include Michael Kors in my searches. But yeah, if you can find a way to work it into your daily schedule to just like check this feed and just be like, what new stuff has been added? Okay, cool, I don't really want any of that stuff, done. You'll end up coming across some pretty fire stuff. Let's move on to my personal favorite place to get designer clothes, the real real. I have bought so much stuff from these people. I can already hear the comments coming in, but the real real has had a lot of trouble with fakes and dupes. Listen, the real real has a problem with fakes and dupes if you are trying to buy something goofy like a Burberry scarf. And I feel confident that everyone who watches this channel is way too cool to be buying things that are well known enough to warrant fakes being made. Like such as, for example, these Massimo Alba velvet jeans. 
Way too cool. These are badass designer jeans, but no one is making fakes of them. Let's move on. The biggest benefit to using the real real is that all of the listings are handled by employees of the company. So you're not gonna have stupid shit where someone's like, I made this, it's a one of one piece, but it kind of looks like undercover. So I'm gonna list it as an undercover coat. Geez, I wanna post examples of that actually happening, but I don't wanna be mean and call anybody out. Again, you're essentially doing the same thing on the real real that you would be doing on Grailed. The only thing that really is considerably better here is that you can upgrade to the first looks membership, which is 10 bucks a month, but you get access to like all of the super, super good stuff as soon as it becomes available. And then you can just like snatch up really good deals really quickly. I personally don't have that upgrade on mine because I just don't buy clothes often enough to be able to justify spending $10 a month to be able to look at them. But I know tons of people who use it and they absolutely love it. And now for the most chaotic option, let's talk about eBay. I have gotten a lot of incredible stuff off of eBay. It is a nightmare sifting through that website. You'll be like trying to search for a small Loewe leather good and you'll find some woman in Minnesota who's trying to sell paper mache cutouts of leaves. There's a lot of crazy stuff on there. It's very chaotic. I don't love using it, but you can find a lot of really good stuff. eBay is actually how I found my Craig Green jacket that was $37 shipped. Yeah, that guy did not understand what he had. Anyway, to circle back around to another point that we were making earlier, if you are looking for a very specific item that is not a particularly well-known item by a brand, eBay is probably going to be your best bet. eBay alerts are beautiful, beautiful things. You just specify the item that you're looking for and eBay just tells you if anything gets listed with that thing. There's a little bit of a balance to be struck here because you don't want to be overly specific because someone might not know to type in those very, very specific things. And so you got to be like, kind of vague but sort of specific so you don't get like an inbox constantly jammed with new listings that don't have any relevancy to what you're actually looking for. They have limits as to how many alerts you can actually set up on a single eBay account. So if you do ever hit that limit, you can just set up multiple eBay accounts with multiple different emails and then have those extra emails just feed into your main email inbox. All right, let's keep moving, let's keep moving. Another really big option used to be Rakuten. The deals there were absolutely incredible, but that's not really an option anymore. Another really excellent source for this is Yahoo Auctions Japan. I have not used this a whole lot personally, but somebody on the private Discord server that's behind my Patreon wrote a guide to it. Thank you, Dang, you're a G. Yahoo is quite time consuming, but the steals you can get are absolutely insane. The website is just auctions.yahoo.co.jp. What you'll need is that website open and an agent. Yahoo Auctions doesn't support people outside of Japan ordering directly. I use from Japan because it's cheap. You pay like 300 yen per auction you win, which is like two euros. But once you have a From Japan account, you can add items you found on Yahoo Japan to your watch list. Just throw everything here that you're interested in. You can bid on those items here. Yahoo works a bit differently from eBay. Once you or someone else places a bid on an auction, it will be extended by five or 10 minutes depending on what the seller chooses. This way you don't have the annoying bidding in the last 0.5 seconds thing, which is super nice. Once you win the auction, it will first be shipped to the From Japan warehouse. There they will calculate the shipping cost to you and you pay that and it's on its way. They also included this legendary document of all of the names of popular brands in Japanese so that you can search easily for them on Yahoo Japan. I have included that link in the description as well. I mean, I'm, I'm really telling you, like the Discord server behind my Patreon is incredible. Next, we're gonna talk about Depop. Does anybody know how to use Depop? I have an account, but I haven't used it yet and I've heard the deals are really good on there. Next, we're gonna talk about proxying things directly from Japan. The land of the rising sun is truly the mecca of menswear for many of us. And the only way to get some of that stuff is literally for somebody else to go buy it for you and then send it. The most clear and coherent methodology for doing this that I've ever read online is from a male fashion advice post on Reddit by T-O-S-C-K. It is fairly long and I don't wanna like misquote him or anything. So I'm basically just gonna link that in the description and you can go check it out if you want to. Proxying is not nearly as expensive or difficult as you think it's going to be. And especially if you're investing in things like VisVim or Capital, like it's just so, so, so much cheaper than buying those things here. Like 60% off type cheaper. So yeah, it's a good guide, go read it. And that's it. Go keep an open mind and cop all of the Johns you've ever wanted. But also please be responsible and don't ruin your life with credit card debt. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, guys. I love you so much, bye.